today. It's uh, Paul here down at the uh, local garden shop where they have some terracotta or earthenware jars um, that are probably about the same size, maybe a little bit bigger than the ones that we saw or read about at the wedding in Cana where Jesus turned the water into wine. And uh, maybe we'll just read a little bit from John chapter 2 verse 1. On the third day a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee and Jesus' mother was there. Um, Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding and when the wine was gone Jesus' mother said to him they have no more wine. And woman why do you involve me Jesus replied my hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. And nearby stood six stone jars, water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Well, these probably hold about 40 or 50 gallons. So, uh, just a little bit smaller than these, they were. Verse 7. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water, so they filled them to the brim. Can you imagine that? They topped them up with the water to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. And they did so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from. Though the servants who had drawn the water knew, and then he called the bridegroom aside and he said everyone brings out the choice wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink but you have saved the best till now what jesus did here in cana of galilee was the first of the signs through him which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him well, I think you'd believe in someone if they could turn water into wine. But basically, there's some hidden symbols in this story. It's interesting that the, the water jars were used by Jews for ceremonial washing. That's what they used the water for, to ceremonially be washed. But it's also interesting that the Bible also says that we should be washed with water and the word. So the water actually symbolizes the word being poured into us. And as the servants filled it up to the brim, imagine yourself being filled up with the word of God in your heart. Store it up in your heart so that you may not sin against them, says in Psalm 119. And then as you pour it out, as you taste it, it is full of glory and full of power. So as you go about your daily life with a great store of the word in your heart, in your body, in your mind, it not only transforms you, it cleanses you, but then it's also a blessing to those that you share it with, like the master of the ceremony. He, he was blessed when he got this new wine. He said, wow, you've saved the best to last. And that's how it'll be with you. When you start sharing the Word of God with people in need, they're going to say, wow, that has really touched my heart or that has helped me solve my problem. It's in Isaiah somewhere it says, he wakes me early in the morning, that's, you know, two or three o'clock in the morning, and gives me the words that sustain the weary. And that's how it'll be with us as we go about our daily lives. If we have got our earthen vessels, which Paul says our bodies are, if our earthen vessels are filled to the brim with the living water that comes from the Word of God, then we're going to be a blessing to people. We're going to bless those as it comes out at the right hour. And you know, Jesus says, it is not my hour, this is not my hour. But when the Word comes out of you, that is the hour that God has planned for you in advance. Ephesians 2.10, we have created in Christ to do good works, which he has prepared in advance for us to do, but we need to be topped up with the word. Our, our lives and our bodies and our minds need to be filled with the word of God 
so that it comes out when it is needed at the appropriate hour. And it's also uh, interesting going back to the woman at the well in Samaria where Jesus says, if you drink the water that I will give you, you will never thirst again. So he gives us living water, water that's got power, water that's like the sweetest and most beautiful wine. And it will be a blessing to those that you share it with as you go about your daily life. So there's a little message from uh, the garden shop where we found six beautiful vessels here of earthen vessels, just like we are, earthen vessels waiting to be topped up as Jesus gives the word into our lives. You have a great day. We'll be talking to you some more. See you later.